Lights, camera, action. In a studio where local filmmakers talk to other filmmakers about the inside world of film. Cut. That's not the script. F*** it. We'll fix it in post. Do you wonder how films are produced and what really goes on behind the scenes? Well, stand by. Filmmakers Kevin Mumphrey, Victoria V.A. Jones, and Carson Hype Ferguson explaining all the details. Right here on F*** It, we will fix it in post podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whenever you're listening, I thank you for doing so. I am Kevin Mumphrey once again, and this is F*** It, we will fix it in post. I am here with my colleagues, Karsten Knight Ferguson yeah. and Victoria V.A. Jones. What's going on? I am sure by now you've all heard about the recent writer strike, which is now gone on for about a little over two weeks now. It's the largest disruption of content being made in Hollywood since 2008. It is a the strike is an ongoing labor dispute between the Writers Guild of America and labor labor unions and the alliance of motion picture television so the last one lasted about three months and a loss of two billion in profits they're not even there at this point they're not even going into the um negotiating table and they probably some people have said that they may not be back to the negotiating table to the end of the summer but also it's like three months right yes yeah that that sounds about right and that's just back to negotiate, not even like, oh, we're going to figure something out in three months. That's just, I need a break from your ass. A lot of reruns, then. So, we're going to have a lot of reruns. That's just for that. Now, what are we Dino doing? Might. What are we doing for streaming? <laughs> what you mean for streaming? You can just rerun streaming. I don't know. I got, I got, I got some new content for streaming. Yeah, but if you, really, if, if you really think about it, though, like with uh, Netflix and... Well, not Hulu because Hulu's mostly studio uh, stuff, like studio stuff. But like the the Netflix and the Amazon Prime, they got their own studios. So like yeah. any original stuff, they're gonna get that, and they're still probably gonna get licensing from whatever companies like own the film stuff that they're gonna be, uh, you know, now, doing their thing with. Brought a film. Now, so far, when you brought a film, the least affected by this strike would be films because anything that's coming out next year. For the most part, has already been filmed. Mm-hmm. Right now, if you were or they the, already got the script script done. Now here's an here's another wrench in that. Ideally, you would be right, but the um, good uh, on the other side. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, well. hey, hey, if it will fix it in post. So, um. SAG After Union has now put in with the um I forgot a ratification for strike, which is basically saying, Hey y'all, y'all cool if when we go because their their contract ends in June next month. So they will be going to negotiate theirs. And I mean they've already been out supporting the writers in their strike and get didn't look it didn't go well for the writers and they're expecting it probably not to go well for the actors. So you can have probably by the end of the summer, both writers and actors on strike. Well, I saw something on the internet where uh, one of the writers who was on strike, they were talking about like they weren't getting paid enough money. Like they, it was like a, a being a writer was kind of like the to, down of the totem pole for them. Uh, as far as pay structure, yes, you're right. So it's kind of like working at a now, regular job. It is so. Um, I was looking this up. They the pay is like twenty to forty thousand a year. The pay used to be more because when you was in network, you had residuals. That's already set up for, for network. But TV viewers are going doing less network and more streaming. Right. Yeah. And, so you got all the cable cutters. So that kind of hurts your negotiating power too, right? Well, they're negotiating with Netflix, Amazon all these streamers and what works for them may not necessarily work for networks. But that doesn't really make sense because why would you cut the writers pay when you won't have anything unless you have writers? Well, it, it, it's what well, they, they cut. It, it's like, it's like making a cut or whatever to, to cutting off your arm to save like the whole rest of the body kind of thing. So like 
they're probably looking down the road and, and some of them are greedy. I'm not going to lie, but they're looking down the road and it's like with all the cable cutters, you're not going to have the same money in the regular TV. It's going to be either streaming or some kind of online service. Yeah, I, I get that, but you still need the writer. I, I didn't say you didn't. I'm, I'm just saying like, I'm saying like they're looking at it or whatever, you know, cause a hundred percent, uh, like a hundred percent of zero is ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, would you rather take the cut up front and, you know, like, but they got funny money accounting anyway, mm -hmm. but, but I'm, but if you really, really looked at it and you had to like do some kind of like cost benefit analysis kind of thing. Right. Uh, I, I don't know it, 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 if, if they are telling the truth, like the, the studio execs, which most people would say they're not. <laughs> and they're not keeping like you know right accounting they're not actually showing you all the books right but if they were then you could see the need to kind of control costs i mean that's one of the reasons why disney can, disney has to uh re-release stuff now that's funny you bring it up because now they have been saying like this is kind of an inopportune time for this to be happening because yeah. i mean one obviously they're still recovering from the pandemic mm -hmm. Um, there were the we talked about strike actually a few months ago, and that was the um, theatrical and it's the theatrical union and a stage union. They almost went on strike, but they like they figured out something like right at the last hour. So there's that, and then they're saying, especially in Netflix, that they're not um, they're not bringing in income, like they're spending more than they're bringing back in. You saw, who are you talking about? Netflix. Now, they're saying this for about all streaming at this point, that it, it doesn't make money. Well, it's it's a it's a loss leader, which is typical in tech. That That's a typical strategy in tech and, like, new, uh, new media and all that stuff is to, like, you know, just put a bunch of money, you get the investment or whatever, so you can kind of wait out that time. And then once you reach like maturity or market whatever, share, yeah, yeah. Once you, once you reach that certain part, now you can actually like benefit, but you got to have the infrastructure in place. You got to have the people. And then like with Netflix, they had stuff like that caused a little bit of bleeding, like the cuties incident and certain like political stuff going on, whatever that caused like a bunch of people to like kind of cut their Netflix subscriptions. And, and also the rising of prices, but and, so and Disney. Cut pulling all their stuff to put on their streaming yes. service, which which almost didn't make any sense for them to do it right away like that, because they were making so much money off licensing to other, you know, platforms. I think that their kind of thought process was to make it to get people primarily to theirs, to their platform. I, I, you talking I, about to Disney's Disney. platform? Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that, but yeah. you would you would you should slowly wean them off versus like just pulling the plug. And even though they have some things, but they pulled certain like franchises or whatever, I think they pulled too many. Well, they pulled all their stuff, right? What Disney? Yeah. Oh yeah, they uh, a all lot of stuff. it. A lot of the bulk of it. Now, yeah, yeah, pretty much, practically all of it, I think. Now there, but that's one issue. But another issue is there are certain stuff they wouldn't keep mm -hmm. because, like Friends, off of royalties and everything, they were spending. I think they said almost like a billion a year. Because oh, Friends ain't on Netflix no more. I don't think so. You sure? It was Friends or Seinfeld. It was one of them shows. It's it's probably it's, Friends because I remember Friends was on shortly, and a, a bunch of people were making a big deal. Yeah, I about think it. Seinfeld was still on. A there. bunch of people were making a big deal out about it, but but that's because of the way they uh, negotiated their thing beforehand. Yeah, the and actors and all that stuff. So and mm -hmm. whereas you, they would get money every time they would air, mm -hmm. they're paying them this money every day. Mm -hmm. Because hey, someone every day is watching this show. Yeah. Binge watching and everything. So you gotta pay them every proper practically every day. So they're saying they're not making money, but the writers are saying, okay, if y'all are making money, how come these CEOs of these companies are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year? Well, I mean, you gotta you, you like they're they're I, I know what the argument is gonna be. It's like you have to pay, you know, top talent, top level talent to like, you know, make the the, the business decisions. It they not, just that they, it, it, it they may not seem ridiculous. fair. It may not seem fair, but I mean, Reed Hastings, whatever, was like the what the former CEO of uh, Netflix or whatever, I guess. Hastings, who, who, um, 
who like uh who's like the great grandson of Ben Barnes, the PR guy, mm. which is pretty interesting in itself. The the that the, is just it's, it's just ridiculous. PR. It's ridiculous that the writers have to go on strike when you need you need the writers. You will yeah. have nothing. And you I, have, I have no a... content. You won't have shit if you don't have writers. So because all these top whatever are not writing this shit because they can't write it. Yeah, but think think of how Netflix disrupted and even changed the industry. But well, we ain't just talking about Netflix. Yeah, but, we're but, talking yeah, about. But, but I'm I'm saying specifically though, like so, like the Reed Hastings or whatever is basically like the Steve Jobs of like the the whole streaming thing. Because you remember Blockbuster had them on the ropes for a little bit. Yeah, and even had a chance to like even like take over, but then they pulled out because of bad decision by a CEO. Because yeah. they, they didn't see the future or whatever. Right. But, uh, it, I mean, at the same time, it's kind of like I mean, it, it's, you you should give the writers what they need. And it, what they, yeah, but it's an ecosystem, though. It's an ecosystem. And it's like one little thing or whatever could upset the album cart and tear the whole thing up. Because it, it could be, like, just blown completely up. And then Netflix could go to zero. Hulu could go to zero. And then, like, you'll have, like, all this, you know, segmentation or whatever. And everybody sell off the assets and then you have to pay like one dollar to like five different platforms. Now yeah, I think if this like if this strike lasts a lot longer than a lot longer, that could probably be a possibility. But right now, when I was looking, producers are perfectly fine with them going on strike right now. In the short term, it doesn't bother them at all because right now they're penny pinching. So they actually currently save money while they're on strike. How are you saving money when you're not putting out no content? So they've pretty much, they kind of knew that this was not going to go well because mm -hmm. of, um, and I think one of the, well, one of the, I think one of the finer issues is AI is why they knew it is when the writers are hell bent on and they're hell bent another way, it seems like. So they've made like bulk of, like I think Paramount has bulk content up for the end of the year. Um, I think we talked about this at one point where um, Revolt has has gotten um the Breakfast Club on their on their network. So I'm talking about BET. B yes, BET. Sorry, yes, BET. Well, it's Revolt slash BET or whichever. Yeah. So they they have stuff like that live current content that does not need writers, or they may get yeah, but that's not going to work for a long time. That's not gonna work. I would have said the same thing about reality television. Judge you back then. There's there judge. Uh, is there any right? I don't think there's writers for hers. No, the courtroom things, TV stuff. Yeah, because I mean she's actually a real judge. Yeah, yeah. Now so, some of those other judges, like Steve Harvey, I was like, so, how the hell are you gonna give Steve Harvey? Uh, I, uh, you know, let me stop. So let's. let's uh, yeah, yeah. So let's. Uh, so let, let's can, just say you know, R.I.P. to Jerry Springer. All right. Yeah, Oh. R.I.P. Jerry. You know what I'm saying? We talk about reality TV. We talk about judges. So, so you're going to see a lot more reality TV. Non what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> so you're probably going to see a lot more of that. <laughs> um, also, with their, you know, it's like a lot of podcasts are going to video. Right. So you they make one to for that, though. Yeah, but it's like, well, you take them and, well, let me just go ahead and put it on. My streaming service to get them something to watch. Is anything I'm trying that, to tell you that is not going to last long because people people want to see entertainment. Like they want to see if it lasts. They want to see television. They want to see movies. They want to escape. Me watching reality TV just reminds me of how crappy the world is. Yeah, but think of how many people watch reality TV though. And, uh, the world's still crappy, and it's even crappier when you're watching that crap. <laughs> so. I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, he's got a point, but I think they're they're they don't need it to last forever. They just need it to last long. We don't enough. know how long it's gonna last. They just need it to last as, until the writers break. Mo most most strikes last until you know uh, uh, maybe a quarter of the members. Case in point, like the NFL, the NFL strike or whatever. Mm. When a quarter of the people realize that they can't live without money for a certain amount of time. That's when they start like getting real antsy, and they they, they lose negotiating power because yeah. they, so, that's what and they that's, saved up. And it, now, the writers they've been 
the saving up there is a fund for people to help help out with. But it's but, a lot of people who are who are in the industry who are backing these writers. So it's not like yeah, they, yeah. actors. It, and the thing is, they they're going to help them until the. They gonna yeah, happen. It, 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 even that's even that get exhausted. Even if you took a hundred percent of like the top five actors' money, that that's still not enough to sustain the majority of these people. So, and, so I'm saying, on, on like at, at most, I say you probably have enough leverage for about eight months, and that that's being very very optimistic. Like three months. And I, like I said, Dick, I believe they'll be back in. Talking in three months, three three I to, f- think, three to five you... months, uh, five months is pushing it. But three three months is like eh, you like start getting kind of like. Eh. But it's like I mean, so like I said, the average writer they're getting paid less than what they were getting paid ten years ago. They're getting paid like twenty, I believe twenty to forty thousand a year. Right, and and most re- that is ridiculous. Now, that and is also ridiculous. put in an, into the account that most writers are living in L.A. In New York, not all of them. No, no, no most actors up there because the Writers Guild actors. is a, not act. I'm sorry, writers. If you're writing a show, they aren't most pretty much they work because the guild is East Coast, West Coast. So if you're in this guild and you're a writer and you're working TV, you're in LA, you're in New York. Freshly, you're in one of those spots. Not Two, all of them, though. If you're in the guild, you're in those spots. Show writers, but I'm not. I'm saying not all of them. Not all writers they, are, because some of the writers are here in Nashville. They may live in Nashville, but they're based out of right. Like, that's so how they're. So the thing is, if you you might be based out of there, but you don't live there. So you saying the expenses most, of, of there. So think of it, okay. Because I think you're thinking of like an established writer. Yeah, but it, it's still it's but still it, expensive, like immer- going back and forth. Yeah. That that's an additional expense. Now I'm talking like an emerging writer, person who's probably maybe one to three years in, who's trying who's trying to trying to make a living. Yeah, they got to go out there. And the way yeah. it works, yeah. and the way because I didn't know how, because I I thought writing for TV worked the same way as it did when we were when we were growing up. They have a big old writers' room. All the writers write. They collaborate. No, they write. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> They just, they just in the room, just like in the room, hey, throwing up, ideas out there. What up, Chuck? Uh, well, not like no, well, no. I mean, they're talking and they're, they're writing on the wall. No, no, not like they're writing <laughs> ra- like raps or nothing. But it was a more bigger, more collaborative effort. They said um, the plan is they're they're saying that the streaming service wants to turn writing into gig work. The writers' room they have many rooms now, so it's like they put more on the showrunner. And basically, basically, you write this, you write your show from home, write the episodes from home, and email it to the showrunner. Hmm. Network said, "Oh, we like it or not? Okay, fix this rewrite." Sounds um, like a, uh, some money people got involved in the storytelling. And, oh, yeah. and, and, and it's gonna make it real clunky. It really is. And it's actually gonna cost more money doing it like that because it's gonna be more time versus having everybody like in one fell swoop. It was actually probably better back in the day, like the whole writing. It, so if it been. was if it was just because if it was just network, I don't think it would be on strike because they have pretty much. I think they have a bait, a, a brass text of how to do it. All you're doing is just negotiating this point, that point, little minor things. But streaming has they completely changed. It's completely changed. It. And well, they they want to chuck on it, but like a streaming service like Netflix ain't gonna give you like the rec- they're not gonna open up the records. Because no, they, they and don't, that's an, and that's they, another, they don't do that with Nielsen, right? And now. that's a um, and that's a point of content. Yeah, they don't. You don't know how many people are watching this show. They don't. They're not legally. There's nothing that says they have to, so they don't. Because it's a whole new medium. It's not regulated. Whereas network TV has Nielsen rating, all that streaming doesn't. And it, I guess, for them, it doesn't benefit them to even show you who's watching. No, why would it? So. I mean, like, hey, all and, my stuff is prior, prior, uh, preparatory. Uh, like, how do you say that? Uh, yeah, prioritary. Um, all the stuff belongs to me. And so, like, and if I show, if I show it to the world and made it like open source, basically, yeah, then it it's only gonna hurt, and it's gonna give my competitors 
the same information that I had a leg up on. I I still think they're gonna hurt having this rider strike. Like it's gonna hurt. I them. think it's gonna you're gonna feel it because just like the one on oh wait we felt you felt it definitely on the back end. There if you had a show in development, it's either it's probably not gonna go on air. It is either is halted or it doesn't go on air at all. Um, one of the most notable shows back then, Heroes. Yeah, I didn't watch this yeah. show. It was, hey, it he, was Heroes actually got canceled because of that. It, it's it was so bad afterwards. Yeah, that it just it was, and I mean I used to watch it and it's like man it really sucks now. <laughs> I didn't realize why until like years later. Um, certain actors actually, so um, God, it was, what am I? Breaking Bad. Yeah. Jesse Pickman was supposed to be killed off. But after the writer's strike, they, they, kept end, they ended up keeping him on. <laughs> so sometimes if, for certain actors, it works out. But there's like, if your show was in development or like a pilot, could put. But, you know, that's a different situation, though, too, because the, um, the guy from Better Call Saul was one of the main writers, too. And he's a producer of that show. Yeah. So, like, that that's a little bit better continuity. I feel like it's like closer to the vest. It's not as many hats. It, it, one person wearing many hats versus like the separation of uh, individuals. Right. So that that's a little bit different situation. I mean, because that that show from start to beginning, you know, outside of maybe like a couple outliers or whatever, was pretty compelling. I mean, it was a it was a good show, so. and it ended beautifully. Yes, it really did. I mean, I mean, it's like one of, it's one of the at least for me, I believe, I mean, one of the better I mean, endings how many, of the show. How many seasons was that? Season was it seven, or was it like more? Seven, I feel like seven or eight. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole but, thing, but I watched um, like oh, boo, you, of, boo, whatever. A, anyways, and it's a stronger point. Well, I'm gonna say stronger, but it is a very strong point of contention. AI. They wanted uh, three points. One. For not for it not to be used, for writer not to use, for them not to use AI to make a film, for them not to producers not to use AI for rewrites, and those are third one I can't even remember right now. But basically, they um, no no they don't want um, they don't want them to use their work to put into AI. So because how AI works, if I give it a bunch of your style of writing. I it'll, can, it'll, it'll copy. write. Yeah. So write a movie about two people falling in love in Jersey in Victoria V.A. Jones style of writing. If I give it enough samples, it will be able to write in your style. So they don't want it to they don't want it to do that as well. See, see, it can do that right now. Like if you load the information in there. If it has enough the, information, yes. Yeah, but but like all the information on the internet though. Like the scripts are on the internet. I mean, and it can it can like I've actually tried tried it myself. It can write you a script. Yeah, like it I, will. Yeah. It it sucks right now. No, but I, like, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> think I don't think you'll get a Forrest Gump out of there. You'll get a. You, you can get a Hallmark movie out of there. No, no Man, offense to Hallmark. I don't even know if you can get that out of AI yeah, right now. Like you would not get I mean, it's, it's decent. You would, you would you, not get, get a, a decent script out of it. Nah, you won't get a Harry Met Sally. You won't. Nah, get nah, a, I don't, you, you won't get that. Like you if won't I get give the, you it, won't get the drama. If I give it enough. No, I like I I, 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 I like maybe, maybe in 15 years with the technology and all this stuff, maybe then, but you don't get the soul of a movie. You don't get a classic, like a Turner classic. You won't get a Turner classic out of AI. Not right now. And not, so, right, so you're, not you're, for another thinking, two years. I mean, I don't agree with AI anyways, but you're thinking even if you give it like those scripts, they got like, the script like, right now. But I'm 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 saying even if you give them that example of those scripts, if you say write me this type of movie and you give those examples, a hundred examples. That is a copy. That is a copy of a copy. That that's what AI it, is. No, no, nah, nah, not necessarily. Because AI learns, and, and one thing that it it can't learn is to be completely original. It's gonna have to source from somewhere else. Because the day where it can be completely original, Skynet's on, baby. It, I but guarantee now, you to get to that if point. If you're right, you want to nip that in the butt now, because it's like I'm not waiting 15 years for the, for the, for these producers to go. Oh wait, I don't even need your writers. Anymore. Right, I'm barely paying y'all now. I just get me an AI, put a make one bulk pay purchase on some sort of AI software. Said we're gonna make these kind of movies. 
these kind of movies. It's not gonna work. These, I not mean, ten years. I think AI yeah, could and, make and, a Fast and Furious. That's a different kind of movie. That that's, yeah, I think. It, that, that's I think a, that's it, a, that's it, a much it, different kind of movie. Like a Forrest Gump is not the same thing as a Fast and Furious. Not Fast and Furious sells though. And the producer's it, trying to make money. Does it? Studios. No, get, no, no, no. Does it sell? Because I don't think the numbers are as good as the first three movies. They keep making it's no, them, it's, they, uh, they, Number they one worldwide right now. They keep move, making a lot of movies. In the Marvel franchise, for example, ain't doing as well as, like, the earlier Marvel franchise movies. It's because they don't have the same core that they did at one point in time. And so maybe they, if you, you know, they gotta go core, back and revamp. You know, but saying? if you don't have the same core or whatever that made it special or made it like you know that that tapped into that nostalgia while presenting it in a certain way, then the your core audience is gonna leave. You know, like it, it's one of those weird tiptoe things that artists, artists slash people that understand the money side of hand, uh, the house have to get right. You do want to make something for like you know mass consumption. But you do want to make something that's gonna actually matter, like ET, for example, Jaws, like these th these were blockbusters, the original blockbusters, right? Yeah. But they actually mattered. Now I think you get less and less of that as people like are chasing the dollar because like they go away from the art form for one versus the other. You can have both, but typically one person settles for one versus the other. But there's very few people that could actually master it. And I don't think AI is, is going to get there within the next five years. I think if more producers had that thinking, this wouldn't be as contentious of a negotiation. No, hell no, it wouldn't be. Because you know what? They would know the exact ROI of everybody involved in the process. And and that's that's kind of part of the set of expectations, too. Because the money guys or whatever, like, partly messed up the industry a while ago anyway. Like, a long time ago. When when a lot of the studios almost went bankrupt, like uh, when they gave like the directors like you know the keys to the the keys to the car and just like set them loose without any oversight. So this is what I think they're thinking as far as AI. I can get AI to if I get if we invest enough into AI <laughs> to where it makes bankable movies. Yeah. Bankable. There's a definitely there's great moves and there's bankable. I'm using the term bankable purposely because if it makes me a profit, that's all I needed to do. I needed to make me a profitable movie. I don't have to pay royalties. I don't have to pay residuals. I don't have to pay writers. All I got to do is type in this. It gives me that. Give that to a director. Tell them to Get them some casting direct your casting directors. Go ahead, give me some actors. Make this movie, and I can make prop. I can make double off my investment. I think you will get more blood rains than you will uh, Jurassic Parks if you did it that way. And, and it blood bloody rain was not a uh, was not a uh, <laughs> it was not a good movie uh, in any sense, right? But, but you you still have to. I'm, but, I'm not going on what you're saying. I'm going back to what mm -hmm. Kevin said. You still have to pay the actors. You still have to pay the people on set. You still have to pay all this other stuff. I mean, you're still gonna be spending money. You still, and I could all. And I'm just thinking of just like a money hungry what, what producer. There, there. He, he. The big thing is you're cutting out the down. The There's stream. certain costs so that I'm. Just be you're the cutting upfront, the upfront costs. Like one of the reasons why Disney re-releases movies is to cut royalties. So like. You're cutting royalties, so like Jason Weaver, that's the voice of uh, uh, Simba. Yeah, Simba was getting royalties every single time, right? You know, for you know lifetime. So like, guess what? We take these, we put them in the vault. Now we recreate the same movie, but we're not using the same actor. Now I ain't got to pay him. Still got to pay him though. No, no, you don't have. I'm, to I'm, I'm saying that off of that movie. I'm saying off, no, of, the off the, re now, the original. No, I'm not but, negotiating, you know, but not the I'm remakes. paying on the on the remake. I'm only paying the front end. Yes, I'm all, all you're paying is one the one time. Fee. It, you're gonna watch the Lion King. I don't need to get some bankable actor. I didn't like the Lion King, the uh, well, live I, well, action one. I never saw it. I said the live action one. I never saw oh, it, but oh. there will be an audience that will go see it just to see how it looks like again. Let's let's see what they do, and that's what they're banking on. I think that's rare though. I like because. I don't think they have enough cachet now because people are so used to watching stuff at their house. 
And like they they kind of screwed over the movie theaters for a long time. But now. people are still going to theaters. Like no, they're still no. selling out at theaters. Uh, though. And not not as much as they were before the pandemic. The numbers are still down. Uh, they they did rebound a little bit, but it, it's not even close. I mean, same I mean thing, the same things happen in sporting events. People are like opting to watch on their HGTVs because they didn't spend so much money for their experience. They got their little home theater. I ain't they doing it because their... I don't like people. So. so that's another thing too. Hey, guess what? I ain't got to worry about traffic. Hey, if the, if the game's terrible or or the movie's not really good, I turn it to something else. Or like you know, like go do something no. else. No, you. But you know, for releases of movies, you still got to pay a little small fee, even if you see it at the house. Mm. Yeah, so. but but it, it's a it's a much better experience because you, you think the reason why the movie theater spent you spend so much at the movie theater is because they they're not making any money off the movie. They're not. The studio is, but the 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 actual theater is not. The theater may might make like if the if the tickets what nine dollars whatever they may make like a dollar. Maybe a dollar and some change. Dollars. Mm. Dude, how much? <laughs> he said nine. He said nine dollars. No, I'm saying if if it's nine dollars, they might make. Hey, that's just an example. <laughs> that's like, but oh, it's like what oh, six, yeah. six, seven dollars now. You talking about a, a ticket? Yeah. To go see a movie? Yeah. No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm out of touch. I mean, you get. I mean, you can. I mean, you can probably get that if you go to like a mom and pop theater. It's a five dollar movie, probably. They got five dollar. I, I don't even. I don't even know if that's still a thing. Any anytime I go to the movie, I always go to the matinee. And how do, much? Do they still for, have matinee? For real? Yeah. How, how much is it though? I I like don't know. Six, six seven dollars, something like that. Depends. Man, but but it, it, it's early. It's early though. So you gotta go early. Like, so, like matinee is like before like four o'clock. So. You know? <laughs> Like, you gotta be like, hey, you gotta get in here before two thirty. Come on! I'm like, what? When is? <laughs> so I wanted to kind of give y'all some of the um, shows that are impacted by this current strike. One of them is was one of them lost. No, I'm playing. Go ahead. Oh <laughs> my god! Uh, I believe this is a show Victoria likes. Abbott Ever Elementary. Oh wow! They, yeah. Now they they had I guess they recently wrapped their. Um, they were supposed to go back into the writers' room on May third. But the writer strike started May first, so that's one show that's out. That's uh, they're on hold. Stranger Things. I don't know if you're a fan of that show. I haven't watched it in. It's it's a, it's a decent show. So that show is supposed to be coming up on its I believe fifth season. They're on hiatus, so that show is on hold. Something more more notable, Saturday Night Live. Now, because they have to write stuff that is current, mm -hmm. they obviously, and I think that was getting, they was supposed to have a show with, the show that was supposed to come out, the one with Pete Davidson, that got halted. So they're pretty much done for the season. Mm -hmm. They're done until they figure out something. It, all late night talk shows are affected. They're the very first ones that are affected by it because they're live, they're the most current. I mean, writers are writing up until the start of the show. So they're affected. They're the first, at first and the most affected. Unless the talk show host, I believe um, John Stewart, had paid, was paying his, his writers to keep going. But I don't think, um, I don't think any of them are doing it at this point in time. Uh, Billions is also on hold. You said lost, but um, I guess The Last of Us is kind of on that realm. I haven't watched the show. I hear it's popular, but HBO show, that's also halted. Loot, uh, this is on Apple TV. The supposed to be a comedy. They were supposed to start on May 5th. Yeah. They're also halted. Wonder Man, which I don't even know what that is. Now, with something, this may be the first film that is halted by, and it's obviously a Marvel film. Daredevil Born Again. They're halted because I guess they was, uh, yeah, no, there was a week. Yeah, there was a week in writing, so... That got halted, and right now they don't know. That's the only film I've seen that is um, halted. Also, one a show that I like, Power Book Ghost. It's a great show on Stars. You check it out. Before. Well, you can't watch it because they're shut down by they got shut down by protesters. So there's that and writing. So they're halted now. Also, 
it didn't show it on my list, but something else that soap operas. They're greatly they're usually the second on a line of um, television that's affected by this because now they write up to maybe two months ahead, but they also keep they, they have to be I would say current, but they write. I know the soap opera. I believe I watch is like a month and a half. They keep a month and a half ahead, maybe two months. Uh, I think some writes like three months because they're they're writing like a whole storyline. So they use that to keep keep things going. But I believe my so I watch General Hospital. I believe they run out of episodes the end of June. All right. So I'm I'm just saying like you. <laughs> yes, I watch General Hospital. I've been watching that since uh, since I was a teenager. Absolutely. I, but I, going back to Abbott mm-hmm. Elementary, like that's the writer is the 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 star of the show. Yep, she's in. So she's in the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild, and that is um, there are certain like Tom Hanks, for instance. He's in all the guilds. He's in the Directors Guild. Uh, I, I believe the only one he is not is in the Producers Guild. That um, or he may be in it, but I know he's in Actors Guild, Writers Guild, and act and uh, Actors Guild. So he's in all like the main in all these um unions. Right. So whatever he's working on, he's just done. And there are certain, uh, I believe even Tyler Perry is somewhat in that position as well. Yeah, Tyler Perry can do his own thing, though, still. Uh, I don't, so so, I, I so you're he, I saying. Think he's, I think he's in the Actors Guild. Because he, act, he, he still acts. But he writes his stuff, too. Now, I'm not saying it's true. I don't yeah, have but, but Tyler Perry, ain't he the same one that, like, wouldn't get help on his films? And like several people were complaining you, about. Usually, it. he writes all of his stuff. No, yeah. So I, which, I which believe, is probably, if his stuff is on network, problem. now I don't know this for sure, but I believe like he's in that guild now. Just like certain really major actors don't necessarily, they don't like rules of the guild. They kind of bend those rules again. So you saying, me, so the people who do not know. So you're saying even though this strike is happening, the people who are part of the guild they have to strike too. Yes, mm. uh, the term is pencils down. Cannot they cannot write anything? They cannot talk to another guild member about a project. Idea. Even with their own stuff. Mm-mm. Maybe like a passion project, maybe, but it ideally no. You don't. We're not discussing anything. We're writing. That's interesting. It's when they say pencils down. There's pencils down. And, now, and if this had been back in the day, like uh, them cats, uh, they they didn't play that. They they'll they'll be doing something to you if you went across that picket line. What? Huh? Like I'm talking about like all, like all the um the um the the um, union or whatever, like at the especially well the labor unions anyway. In the labor unions, they were shooting at people that went across the the picket line. You talking about the people who went to work? Yeah. <laughs> if you cross that picket line because you you heard our position. <laughs> Like in right, Kentucky, you, you. in Kentucky, in uh, You're talking about the in, mafia. In Cle- well, I mean, you know, like in Cleveland, like like a lot of the unions had like mafia ties. Yeah, back in back in that, yeah, they had all the unions back then. <laughs> yeah, like most of the unions. But th- yeah, that's the thing that labor, some people labor. don't understand. Like, you know, being part of the guild, even though if if you're good, you still you you are part of that yeah. too. There, so, um. Hollywood probably has, and there's not a lot of unions currently in America, but I think Hollywood unions are some of some of the, or may, may, if not the strongest, definitely one of the strongest. And there's one more thing I wanted to kind of get out there, because I'm pretty sure somebody may see the situation that well, why maybe like a, an indie writer, why don't they just hire them to write some stuff, and then just, just get somebody else for cheap, and somebody who may be looking for an opportunity who's not in the union may try to sneak in. Right. So I looked into that. So there's a term they call scabs. Yeah. And I want to explain it to me like this. So you you don't get into a fight when a husband and wife is in a and are arguing with each other. You don't get into it. Hell yeah, you leave that stuff. Because once they make up, they come after at, you. You're at fault. And that's how this this how this works. So it's one thing that everybody's in this seems to like all like 
unions, like right right unions across the globe seem to agree on. If you're not in the union and you try to sneak your way in the union, once we get this fixed up, you can't get these major networks only deal with people in the union. So they're throwing you out as soon as this is fixed up <laughs> and they're not letting you in. The guilt, the, the unions ain't letting you in because you're considered a scab and the networks ain't fit to hire you because they, they only work with the union. Well, you got to think too, like say, case in point, whenever the NFL had their, um, their strike way, way back in the day and they had the scabs, the, the players weren't as good. So like the, the writers may not be as good. I, I, although, you know, there's some agreement, disagreement with that, but the writer, the writers may be like those athletes where they weren't as good. Where where only like maybe three players stuck around, they were scabs. So, here's what I would say to that. With with NFL, that is is a lot more tangible. You can see, okay, he's not he can't. Once we put the real players on, he can't run with them. He can't pass with them. He can't catch with them. Yeah, but it's the same thing with the writers. But writing is like like a thing, good, a a great writer. Uh, like you could tell the difference between uh, like a, a a great writer and an okay writer. There's a great huge writer difference. is also a bit of subjectivity to it. Yeah, but, they may be but, great, but they may not. But, but okay, so somebody writing Fight Club, the treatment from Fight Club, or the book for Fight Club, is a whole lot different than writing like some whatever obscure you know storyline. It's it's not the same thing. Like what, what's what's that movie like? I am thirteen, for example. I am thirteen. I am thirteen. Yeah, it, it's the. I it, definitely ain't it, seen it, this. It's like a, it's like an alien thing or whatever. Uh, the, I'm, the, the boy I'm thinking put, about you talking about the, thirteen the, going on thirty the, or something. The, the boy <laughs> was like put on Earth or whatever, and, and all this stuff. It's like one of those teen coming to age kind of things, whatever. Where it's like he got superpowers. He finds out he's from an alien race. It's like humanoid, whatever. <laughs> and, and anyway, that's not as good as some of these other movies. And like, I, I feel like it's like that. To where they tried to make like a one of those like kind of mid level kind of di- deals and make like a a mid level blockbuster versus Independence Day. Here's the thing: so better, made, better writing, better actors, better investment up front. Whatever, with, with everybody involved in the project versus this. I see what you're saying, but someone may identify with this film more so than they identify with that film. Now, I think the person who, the top tier who's in the guild, who's been writing for years, if they write 100 films and the other, and the scab, per se, write 100 <laughs> films, this one's going to have more stuff that more people may, may dra- gravitate to. But just one to well, one. Per- is, is the scab equivalent? Can, the scab can be. And it's like, it's more akin to golf. Like a, a great golfer can have a bad day. And a bad golfer can have a good day and they can get kind of close, but they're still going to be on a different level versus like an NFL player, a professional NFL player. That's like an a level athlete versus, you know, XFL player. It's night yeah. and day difference. Also, I wanted, so I got there. Um, some of those things that the, some of the negotiations and some of their counters, I got kind of got like a list of this. So I'll let you know some of them. So one of them is streaming features. With so like if a if it's a feature film, there's a certain pay scale if it's a feature film. Whereas a different pay scale if it's not a feature or a different type of content. Right. So they're trying to kind of make a guideline on what is considered a feature when on streaming. So a streaming feature with a budget streaming features with a budget of twelve million or more receive full theatrical terms including better initial composition and residuals. Their counter offer was made programs that are 96 minutes plus with a budget of 40 million more received 9% increase to initial computation, no improvement on residuals. Weekly pay, 50% paid upon commencement and remaining 50 be paid weekly over the writing period. Applies if writers are paid less than 250% of minimum writers above this thirst threshold have to write to opt in to weekly pay. They rejected the proposal, made no counter offer. So, oh, and so I didn't realize this until I was looking into this. I wanted to bring this up. If you notice, like when we watch, like, um, 
network television, the seasons of their shows were like 20, 18 to 22 episodes. Most of them. Sometimes they're they're not. Yeah. So I'm saying like with network, a writer could make a living off of that. Because you can pay weekly. You got more episodes. You're making more money. Right. And then after that show, especially if you were good at saving money, you got money to kind of keep you afloat while you're finding your next gig. And if you've gotten like a, a pretty good name for yourself, it's not taking you that long to find your next gig. But right. if you're new, it may take you longer, but you've got enough money to stay afloat. Look at streaming services. I didn't even think about this until I started looking at it. The seasons are like eight to 10 episodes now. But they're longer episodes. They're longer episodes. And, you, you know, you don't have commercials in them. So they put more money into it. There's more writing being put into it because you don't have commercials. So you got to write for that. So you're writing instead of like, what, 20 some, 20 set, 22 minutes, I believe, for a network show? Yeah, but they, they got a different metric, though. Their their metric is not episode; it's watch hour. So like, they 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 want so many watch hours. That's how they 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 part of the 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 measurement or whatever of attention to uh, see if they're gonna put more money in that show. And they got a lot of churn too. Now, and I mean, they do invest more money. I know Netflix; they've been they throw money at the episode. It's just they don't throw it to the writers. But the episodes are shorter. They're right. I mean, they they ask for more from their writers. They don't comp, so they don't pay for rewrites. Yeah, but it, it it's probably like more gig work kind of. Kind that's of the stuff. and that's the problem. And that's it, and like, that's what they're upset about. Well, I mean, it, like, I, and and unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what school of thought you come from, whatever. What, what's going to happen is they're going to replace some of this stuff with just like people that have ready made projects. Now, uh, elaborate. What do you mean by late ready made? Like, like the the independents, they just go and and do a licensing agreement with the independents. You you talking about far as like movies though, not like more so television. Or I mean, like even even streaming shows. I'm like, not talking all, about like, like major like, movies. I'm just yeah, talking but, about like no, television I'm, shows. Even even streaming shows like Always Sunny in Philadelphia started as a YouTube thing. Like it, they're they'll they'll find more of those. So kind of like a um. So the example I'm thinking of when you're saying this is Issa Rae's Insecure. Yeah, probably. And even that, they like recasted. And yeah, but mo- mo- most of this stuff is recast. They're most of re-shot, stuff is recast. rewritten. It's, it's because because the quality wasn't there, but the the general core of it was there. So and, and the then, basics was and, there. And, and, I mean, same thing like with with musical artists or whatever, right? So like this music artist has been out for seven years, but the first time the world hears them is on their first studio album, right? Like, like that's why almost everybody's first album is so good because they put everything into it. They've been working on this for seven years, and a lot of the songs have been re-releases. Hell, the weekend's first like studio album, I gotta make sure I do that or whatever, was just damn Echoes of Silence, which had been out for like two years beforehand. People are like, oh, this is pretty good. I'm like, man, I heard that three years ago, man. What's up? But just now, true now, but it's still with television. You're still going to do some sort of writing towards it. Yeah, but you, it, it's it's still cheaper though because you you have a, like a basis already. You already have a basis, so it's it's cheaper to write that or rewrite that than it is to write something completely from scratch, or to commission something. Maybe, but I think that's, and you may be right, but, and it's probably where they're going for it. And anybody who's trying to save money will probably do something like that. But the writers are trying to fight off of that because they want, they want TV writing to be career work, not gig work. Um, and a lot of I, Hollywood I mean, is already. I mean, good luck. That, that, that's not the way the industry is going to be supported in the future. Like if you're going more streaming, the streaming services aren't going to, that's not advantageous for them. They're, they're going to look out for numero uno and they don't care about a career. I, 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 and it's not me trying to be callous or anything like that. It's just like, you know, the, the brass tacks of it. They're going to do everything in their power, like not to pay a license. They don't want to open up the books in a certain way. They don't want to give out metrics. 
So there's no way for you, unless they share their proprietary information, that's the only way you can get the numbers to be able to hold them accountable. And they're so not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to loosen that, that stranglehold that they have right now. So to wrap this up, make sure this, how, how long do you think this strike may last? Uh, at the longest six months. You think six months at the longest. Tori, how long are you thinking? I hope it lasts a year, but I'm no, I know it's not going to last a year. So I'm going to give it like, Italy, yeah, I'll give it six months, maybe eight. I'll put two more months on it. So because of the positioning that you made, made, made Karsten about how they're kind of looking out for numeral and the streaming services seems to be the bigger issue here. I have a, I feel like this is going to last longer. Now, if the actors end up going on strike and the director's guild, they have to negotiate as well. And if they end up going on strike, I don't think it would last a year. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Um, the quote unquote movie star outside of like, you know, top tier A-list Hollywood actors from our generation and up is pretty much dead. So like people aren't going to see like the movie star um uh, as much. Um so moving forward or whatever, you may see a resurgence of the old style, like in the 40s, 50s, to where the studios start getting actors and you'll see the same actor in all their movies. I see that. So I, so, so I had they basically a- like contract this person out or whatever, pay them a flat fee and they act in like five or six movies a year. Possible. I, I feel like the... I feel like the guild would have something against Yeah, but it, that, it's but. it's going to be completely outside of the guild. It'd be like I, an Amazon Studios actor. And, and, I, and Amazon's a company that, that doesn't care about upsetting the Apple cart. It, I think they would have done that by now if they could have. No, nah, I, th- I don't think it was cost effective. Just like uh, the McDonald's in Dallas or whatever is fully automated. It's only cost effective at a certain point. Once you, get, once you reach uh, point X. That's when it's like, all right, now we can make the investment. So, and what you're saying, are, the union stopped that. Are unions are still on strike when that happens, or do you think this is something that happens? It, it I, like you may see something like that in the future, because like you know, history doesn't repeat itself, but it it sure does like to rhyme. <laughs> That's not mine, by the way. I stole that from so, somebody. Of course, of course. I go, I'm happy. Like, no, nah, I got some good ones, but. No, that's sure. not mine. So I'm and so I've had a thought process like if, if this lasted a year, if if and this would be worst case scenario, writers, actors, and directors all are striking. One, I tend to think it would be a lot of reruns. It's gonna be a lot of reruns, but it's also gonna be a lot. So think, how many people you know watch more YouTube now? I watch YouTube than, a lot of time. Yeah, I watch more YouTube yeah. than I do television. Mm-hmm. I probably watch. It's about yeah, probably why it's probably about Nick and Nick for me. Mm-hmm. Then I realized like I was talking to my niece who's like thirteen, her and her friends, they watch she, their TV in her room is basically a decoration. They I, watch YouTube. Her friends that watch YouTube. I watch YouTube on my TV. I got YouTube shows that I watch on my TV. So and so I feel like it's going it could possibly be I and mean, this may not even take a year. This could be honestly in a few months uh, just a boost to youtube and i don't think they're under any union laws or nothing like that which no. could be something they may ta- well we don't know of though we season. don't know we really now, don't. like youtube youtube ain't got no union mm-hmm. like, i mean, they're not like, under- I mean like uh, outside of like the jimmy kimmel's and the network television or whatever there's no like big box now they do YouTube. like original content through unions but i don't think they're they have an agreement no. with the union that and and but, then, and then the, the genie's out of the bottle now. You can't put it back in. Uh, so like um, King Bach, for example, and all these in RDC and these cats that do skits, like those are the first two to come to mind right now. The Jake Pauls, all this stuff, they have like a string of consciousness for like some of these younger kids and stuff like that. So like people are gonna already go to that versus anything else, or the talk shows, which are like the 
the talking head types that are on YouTube. I can, I can, I can, the live I can shows. see like more watching of that. And this yeah. is, and this is way more. This is not nothing I really think would happen, but could be possible. And I think you watched Dollywood. Dollywood. Yeah, not do- uh Bollywood. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Dolly Parton. Sorry. <laughs> Bollywood. Those are like some of those are good. Some of those epics. Now some of those are actually really good. I mean, if it lasts long enough, could it be possible that people start or that Bollywood starts like trying to? And I don't know if they're under anything unionized itself, but I'm just going under the guise of it's, it not being in a form of any union, or anything. Well, I mean, but they may try to take advantage of it. Why not? And gain. I mean, like American artists. Like, look at the 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 South Korean. I mean, but you, Squid Games, the South Korean uh joint. Right, but you still had Bollywood because this past Oscars, Bollywood won a couple of Oscars, so it's it's something now that's this. And there was a time where I mean they could kind of because people I think people in America now are, and I think Netflix is uh can be attributed as that people are more open to looking at content outside of America. So that, that's, that's been away for a while now, though. That's been away for a while. I, I felt like Netflix like, has are, probably been attributed to what, creating not, not Netflix. Netflix, but like IFC on the movie channel or whatever, the international film channel or whatever, that was a big thing. And that was like, what, HBO or Showtime, one of the two? And that's that was a big, big thing for a while. It, it was just like, wasn't really talked about that much. But like you had that, you have like uh, manga, anime. Uh, there, there's several, several um, sectors where they've been growing market share slowly and steadily. I mean, like Netflix is making a huge investment in anime. Huh. I mean, Wait, really? I, I didn't. I was now thinking. About, I didn't know that. Yeah. So they're making original content off anime. Yeah. I mean, like that Castlevania was pretty, pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. No, no, I haven't. It's got that. got like three or four seasons or whatever. I mean, extremely compelling storytelling. It's some pretty good writing on that. Uh, to I mean, high level movie type stuff, and you can do a lot of stuff, um, special effects wise, with animation that actually may be cheaper than going like the Marvel route in the in the the real world practical kind of sense. And on that note, we're going to wrap things up here because I'm hungry. Now. Didn't you just eat? Yeah, did not much. But look, that's not important here. I thank you all for the, listening. I, <laughs> so, Victoria, any Car- final nope, thoughts? I ain't no, no final, final thoughts. Thought. No, no. So, no, Carson, no, any? Because Carson done ruined everything for me. I ruined everything. What yeah. are you talking about? Carson ruins everything. There's your final thought. Well, <laughs> It's your man's fault. What? So, nah, sorry. Uh, th- th- that that's some internet for you. That's some deep, deep internet. Well, I would just like to say, hopefully, this is something that could be worked <laughs> out. And it ain't gonna be worked out. <laughs> so we just crushing dreams, huh? A lot, <laughs> so, a lot of them. But if you my dreams, if you're <laughs> if you're wondering why <laughs> your favorite programming isn't coming out when you thought it was coming out, because they need to pay the uh, writers more. That's why. Final thought, pay the writers. And I am once again Kevin Mumphrey with my colleagues, Victoria V.A. Jones. What's going on? And Karsten Hyde-Fargson. Sure. And that is a wrap.